Next, we come to the second trumpet, which brings us up to the year 1913 in the buildup with the hidden dynasty of economics because of the Federal Reserve Act, the dollar being the global currency. And as we saw in part one of this series, Eustace Mullins was once quoted as saying the Rothschilds invented Zionism, fascism, Nazism, and communism all in 1830 in Germany. Eustace Mullins wrote the book Secrets of the Federal Reserve and in chapter five goes into detail about how how it was the House of Rothschild behind the creation of the Federal Reserve System, which came into being in 1913. The most powerful men in the United States were themselves answerable to another power, a foreign power, and a power which had been steadfastly seeking to extend its control over the young republic of the United States since its very inception. Remember, Adam Weishaupt created the Bavarian Illuminati in 1776, and then he died in 1830. This power was the financial power of England centered in the London branch of the House of Rothschild, reserve currency being another name for global currency and the Federal Reserve System coming into being in 1913 led to the Bretton Woods Agreement about three decades later, which according to Kimberly Amadeo in an article called Why the Dollar is the Global Currency, the Bretton Woods Agreement kick-started the dollar into its current position. So think global as far as these four hidden dynasties are concerned, and 1830 being the educational, now we come to 1913 and the hidden dynasty of economics. The number of Earth is four, so again, think global, and through the four hidden dynasties, the Kenites and their co-religionists formulate the one world political system that will emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet, and at the woe of the sixth trumpet, all six trumpets of deception will be sounding at the same time, so the third that we see written of in the first four trumpets aren't killed, spiritually speaking, until the sixth trumpet. So bear that in mind as we go to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 8 and see the twofold meaning here. The second trumpet began to sound in 1913 when the Federal Reserve System came into being, and that trumpet's been sounding ever since. And at the sixth trumpet, it takes on its ultimate spiritual meaning. So Revelation chapter 8 and verse 8, and it reads, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain, which is symbolic of a nation, burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Ultimately, this is the Christian nation, which isn't any specific geographic location, but rather the many-membered body of Christ worldwide. A third of the earth are Christian at this time, and think about it, only Christians can die spiritually because they're the only group who have eternal life abiding within them. Christ is the only way to the Father, and who Whosoever believeth upon the only begotten Son of God shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. But at the sixth trumpet, most Christians will begin to worship the devil, and then they're no longer Christians. They're dead, spiritually speaking. That fire is extinguished whenever they worship the false Christ. God's elect won't be killed spiritually at the sixth trumpet because they won't worship the false Christ. They're the 7,000 written of in Romans chapter 11 who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So again, Again, the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and in the buildup with the four hidden dynasties going back to 1913, you could also take this to mean the United States being cast into the sea, which is symbolic of people, written of in Revelation 13, that the one world political system rises up from at the beginning of the hour of temptation. Again, there's a two-fold meaning having to do with the buildup and the four hidden dynasties, and then ultimately at at the sixth trumpet, when all six trumpets of deception are sounding at the same time, and the third part of the sea became blood, spiritually dead, when Satan appears at 666, in other words. That's what happens to a Christian whenever they begin to worship the devil. They die spiritually, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, meaning they were Christians on their way to everlasting life, but then they died spiritually, and the third part of the ships were destroyed, and this has a spiritual meaning as well, and as much as Christians are supposed to be vessels unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, 
and prepared unto every good work, as we know from 2 Timothy chapter 2. But when a Christian worships the devil, they're no longer a Christian. They're a Satan worshiper, and they become Satan's vessels, so to speak, carrying out the works of iniquity, which is the in their right hand part of the mark of the beast. That's why God's elect are called the ships of Chittim, because they remain vessels of our Heavenly Father being delivered up to death, which is one of Satan's names, and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through them during the sixth trumpet. As far as the build-up to that is concerned, the ships written of in the second trumpet signify commerce, which brings us back to the economic dynasty, which began in 1913, with the second trumpet lining up with the second vial and the third seal. So 322, beginning in 1913, the number of the skull and bones, incidentally, and we see in the third seal a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. These are the balances of deceit you can read of in Amos chapter 8. So it has to do with deception, and Amos chapter 8 also speaks of the famine for hearing the words of the Lord. That's ultimately what this third seal has to do with. That famine is obviously in the world now, but at 666, it will reach the ultimate extreme because of Satan's appearance as Antichrist. So 322, and the second vial has to do with the sea as well, which is symbolic of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And you'll find the second vial written of in verse 3 of Revelation chapter 16. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea beginning in 1913. And then we see the semicolon, which means what follows won't occur until 666. That's when Satan appears in Jerusalem as Antichrist and the first six seals, trumpets, and vials go into their ultimate spiritual meaning. And it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. The only living souls being those who believe in Jesus Christ. They'll die spiritually for the most part at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, with the exception of those whose names were written in the book of life of the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, God's election. So there you have the 322, which lines up with the hidden dynasty of economics, and 1913 with the build-up to the hour of temptation. Again, in Daniel chapter 3, we saw the type of the sixth trumpet there, with those six instruments all sounding at the same time, and the second instrument listed there is the flute. As you can see in your Smith's Bible Dictionary, the flute used in those days was made of reeds and of copper and other material, the principal wind instrument, and the first time you see anything of that nature written of in God's Word is in Genesis chapter 4 with Cain's genealogy, and one of the first batch of the Kenites was named Jubal, which means a stream of water. Remember the second trumpet in the second vial had to do with water, the sea that is to say, and Jubal was the father of all such just handle the harp and organ, the organ being a general term for all wind instruments according to the Smith's Bible Dictionary. The Hebrew word probably denotes a pipe or perforated wind instrument such as the flute we see as number two on the list in Daniel chapter three. And it won't take you very long to figure out it was the Kenite money changers who brought about the Federal Reserve in the year 1913. And as far as the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial is concerned, you cannot have a one word world religious system, a one world government without first installing a one world economic system. And this takes us back again to Revelation 13. After Satan appears as Antichrist, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, which is a figure of speech, which means the work that you do, or in their foreheads, which is where your mind is. It's the deception that Satan is Jesus, and that's why that third dies spiritually and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, that man of sin, written of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and his number is 603 score and 6. That's when Satan appears is the sixth trumpet, the sixth vial, and the sixth seal. That's 666. And once Satan appears as Antichrist to heal the deadly wound written 
of in Revelation 13, there will be a one-world economic system basically already in place. We see the formulation of it now, but this will be a one-world religious system that requires the inhabitants of the earth to worship Satan in order to receive the one-world currency. And as we know from Revelation chapter 9, the seven-year-long tribulation of Satan has been shortened to a five-month period. It was seven years, now it's five months. Satan doesn't appear as Antichrist until the middle of the tribulation. As we know from Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, the middle of a five-month period is two and a half months into it. So then the time between the appearance of Satan as Antichrist at the sixth trumpet and the return of the true Christ at the seventh trumpet is only about 70 days. My point is, we don't have all that long of a wait before the true Christ returns and God takes care of his own. As Christ said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? And then if you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning with verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, or woman, no gender involved here, flee these things and follow after righteousness, that's one, godliness, that's two, faith, three, love, four, patience five and meekness six so instead of the six trumpets of deception follow after righteousness godliness faith love righteousness instead of the hidden dynasty of education godliness instead of economics faith in god not politics or politicians love instead of religion patience rather than the one world political system that emerges at the woe of the fifth trumpet and meekness as opposed to the one world religious system that emerges at the woe of the sixth trumpet. Meekness is humility, because if you be one of God's elect and are delivered up during the sixth trumpet, it's not you that speaks, but it's the Holy Spirit. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who returns at the seventh trumpet, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, and this word in the Greek means dynasties, a ruler or officer of great authority, mighty, potentate, the king of kings and lord of lords, who will destroy both Satan's role of antichrist and his one world system, which includes the four hidden dynasties. So immediately after the six trumpets of deception have completely played out at the end of the hour of temptation, the true Christ returns as king of kings and lord of lords.